Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass and TV, and today we're going to talk about starting your own YouTube fishing channel. All right, so in a recent video, I asked for your questions, and this question came up from H. Allen Fones, F O N E S, I think I'm saying that right, and he says, Getting ready to release my first YouTube video, any thoughts on things I should watch out for? So, Alan, I appreciate you asking this question, but here's what I'm going to tell you. I've planned on shooting this video for a while, and I appreciate the, uh, the nudge in the right direction. Starting a YouTube video, or starting a YouTube channel, and starting to do video uh, is something that everybody should really um, ask themselves why they want to do it, what are their goals, and how much effort, energy, and time can you put into it uh, before starting. Then, after you've decided that, you know, you should invest in, you know, the best possible equipment that you can get at the time to be able to pull that off. If you don't have the money for equipment, you can do it with a cell phone uh, and free editing software. I know a number of successful channels who have gotten very well established with nothing more than a cell phone uh, and free editing software, so you don't have to go crazy. But if you're going to buy camera equipment, right, don't buy it in a stair-step approach. Don't buy a little bit better camera and then a next little bit better and then the next little bit better and then the next little bit better. If you're not gonna spend $2,000 on a camera, don't spend $4,000 on a $2,000 camera because what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna stair-step your way up. Generally, that stuff is obsolete by the time you decide you wanna try to sell it and you don't get a lot of money in return. And a lot of people try to go too big too soon. So stick to a cell phone. Uh, buy a GoPro in the beginning and you can pretty much establish your channel and establish your your flow, your style, your brand, what you are teaching, how you're teaching it, and develop your style. I would say watch a lot of YouTube when you first get started to make sure that you don't really copy someone else's style, but to be inspired by them, to make sure that you don't do what other people are doing, but to be, you know, um, motivated by them and to have realistic expectations in the beginning. I see a lot of times that folks start a YouTube channel and the very first thing they do is they set these lofty expectations. They've got five subscribers and they're already posting a video saying, you know, looking to get 10,000 subscribers. You know, you gotta have 100 before you can have 1,000. You gotta have 1,000 before you can have 10,000. And you gotta have 10,000 before you can have 100,000. So um, I've worked very hard on developing this channel over the years. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've made a lot of changes along the way, but I think I've settled into the groove of the type of content that I wanna create. Uh, I do wanna get a little more creative with my own water stuff. Uh, and I do plan on bringing you guys some more in-depth, on-the-water fishing stuff with some creative angles and things like that. So I'm even evolving, you know, now at the six-year point uh, of running the channel. But I think the, the basic advice is don't overspend on your camera equipment in the beginning. Don't go crazy with your editing software. You can start off... Uh, if you have a MacBook, you can start off with iMovie. And still, in fact, I still do a lot of my editing with iMovie. Uh, if you have a PC, get Adobe Premiere and get like a two-year out-of-date version so that you can get the basics. You can buy that pretty cheap uh, and that'll get you started. Uh, if you have the financial resources and you want to invest in it, then Adobe Premiere is the best stuff out there. I'm actually learning that system myself now. Um, and But again, don't overspend don't overcommit and don't try to do too much too soon. Focus on getting a good flow. Focus on making sure you have a dialogue with your subscribers. Making sure you have a dialogue with your followers who aren't subscribed to your channel. Um, and then I think that the next thing you should really do is just develop your voice, right? Develop your voice, develop your brand, and then make sure that along the way you don't sell out, okay? You don't start promoting things that you don't really use. Don't start trying to um, regurgitate information you see other YouTubers doing. Don't, you know, try to come across like you know things that you don't know. And I see people fall victim to that a lot of times. And you could just, people can generally tell when you're authentic. So be authentic, be real, don't spend too much money, and, but get the best equipment that you can in the beginning so you don't stair step your way up or stick with something simple uh, like a cell phone uh, or a GoPro. Um, and then the last thing that I can tell you is something that I actually have struggled with this last year, but I've made peace with it. I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to let it come. And that is this focus, this hyper focus on subscribers. Okay. Don't focus on that. Okay. Subscribers will come. 
uh, views will come, uh, distribution will come. And I see this a lot and I'm not throwing anybody into the bus that does it. I'm just telling you for me where I'm at personally now and the way I plan on ran, running my channel. I'm gonna remind you at the end of the video to subscribe, but I'm not going to pander for subscribers anymore, okay? Here's why I think that that's important. And if you're starting a new channel, do this from the beginning. Um, focus on and support and give back to the subscribers you have instead of constantly focusing on the ones that you don't have. I appreciate all 40 plus thousand subscribers that I have right now. I think we're around 42,000. Um, I'd love to hit 50. I'd love to hit 100. But I am more concerned and I am more focused on giving back to the 40,000 that got me to where I'm at than focusing on getting the next 60,000 or 160,000 or 260,000 or whatever. I get, I'm blessed in being able to do what I love for a living. YouTube is a piece of that. It's not all of it. It's an extension of what I do and I enjoy the interaction. I enjoy the sharing and I enjoy the, the response. So the thing that I can tell you is start a YouTube channel for the right reasons because you are passionate about this and you want to share it with others because you want to fire other people up because you want to get them excited about it and because you want to help promote companies that have been good to you that have supported you and make quality products that we can all use. So again, I hope that covers the basics on why you should start a YouTube channel, the approach you should have once you start a YouTube channel, and honestly, the focus you should have to be successful at doing this thing they call YouTube. So anyway, guys, like I said in this video and all my videos, give this video a big thumbs up if you could. It takes a little bit of effort from you. It means a whole lot to me. Uh, it helps the channel grow. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you saw here, don't forget to smash that subscriber button. Blah, blah, blah. And as always, leave a comment below. Leave a bunch of comments below. Here's the other thing. Comment on the comments. You guys interact. We're a, we're, we're, a, we're a brotherhood here, right? And so you don't have to just ask me questions. You can ask each other questions in the comment section below. It makes us an awesome community and a great environment for everybody to learn. Anyway, hope you guys like this video. I'll see you guys next time on Kayak Bassin TV.